How many of you are union members? Well, there you go. All right. Well, it's it's you got to get it. How do you get in the union? You got to get credits. How do I get credits? Well, I got to get auditions. How do you get auditions? You got to get an agent. How do I get an agent? You got to have credits. What? <laughs> <laughs> and it's the same thing with the SAG card. I said, okay, I'll go get a SAG card. No, you can't get a SAG card. Why? Well, you got to have a credit. What, what's a credit? Well, you got to you got to have worked on film and TV. I said, well, how do I get that? Well, you got to have a SAG card. <laughs> I said, what? And it went around and around like that. But I found a way. I found a way. And you'll find a way too. The point is, and the, the damage in this market, I, okay, let me rewind again. This has been a very interesting week. Um, my agent, I, I live at, uh, um, right next to like Choices, and my address is exactly my agent's address on Homer Street. My address on Richard Street. So I'm down there all the time. And I had something I wanted to talk to him about, and he said, let's talk Monday. So I walked in, and we sat down. And he went on this rant about teachers in Vancouver. He said, honest to God, he said, I don't, I, I'm, it, I, it makes me crazy. He said, I call up this one acting school, and I see this actor needs to go back to class. This guy's a terrible actor and shouldn't be teaching. This actor shouldn't be teaching. This guy needs to go in classes. Right down the list. He went down on the right. I didn't say a word. <laughs> Did Not a word. Huh? Did you see the list? Oh, no, you didn't have to see that. I knew what he was talking about. I have 20 of my ex-students teaching. They ought to be ashamed of themselves. There's one that deserves it. He's fabulous. But he doesn't teach regular acting. He teaches a certain type of thing. I won't mention it. But he's terrific. And he's, he's, but the rest of them? Are you freaking kidding me? It's, it's heinous. And then there's students of mine who have taught and their students are now teaching. I ain't kidding. It's crazy. Okay. God bless them. They want to make a buck. But what's bad, listen, it's not these aren't bad people. They believe they can do it. Why? All audiences are perfect and everything you do reads. You can tell when it's not working, right? It's explaining how to fix it. That's the problem. And they come up with these on-camera acting classes. And you know how I feel about this. There's no difference between acting. It's acting. If you're lying, I don't care if you're on camera or on stage, you're lying. Period. And no on-camera class that I've ever been, heard of has ever really imitated what happens on a set anyway. And I can understand if somebody wants to get on experience on a movie set. I remember the first time I was on one. There's a lot of stuff going on. People putting watches on you and pumping in your hair and putting fucking makeup on you. And the script supervisor, who I had no idea that's what they did, they said, well, you said this word and you need to say this word. And I'm trying to remember what the director just told me to do and huh and what. And these things are going and tracks are being laid and cameras are moving and lights are moving and your shadow's here and your shadow's there. And, okay, don't turn this way, turn that way. Mm -hmm. But wait, they still want you to act. They want you to bring the emotion. They want you to bring the physicality. I've told you that I'm, I'm creating a program, I'm, I'm dedicated to stamping out the, the premise or the fallacy that there is a different kind of acting for film and television than there is for stage. And I'm actually creating a, a program that basically is a film, acting, a film and TV acting course that has no camera in it. And I am going to prove it to anybody who will step up. I'm thinking of giving it away free because it's just making me crazy. I did a, a Hallmark movie, for God's sake. A Hallmark movie where there's a scene where I have these two women at gunpoint and one of them smacks my hand with the gun and I chase both of them full tilt I slam a door, grab one by the shoulder, pull her away, whirl around. I'm going for her. I have the gun again. She hits my hand with a, with a fire extinguisher, knocks the gun away, and knocks me down into, like, I have a place I have to fall. Then I get up and chase her full speed. And it's full out. There's no bullshit. It's full out. They want it violent and nasty and raw. Show me that in a non-camera acting class, where you sit in a chair and talk to each other. It drives me crazy. It does not serve us. The, 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 the 
wonderful thing about Vancouver is there's a lot of work here. And the bad news about Vancouver is there's a lot of work here. And you think it easier than it is, and they play to that, and they feed to that, and the actors are young and vulnerable, and they just don't know. Your competition is not the 70,000 actors in the BC, UBCP, or even the ACTRA. It's the 750,000 actors that are down in LA, and another half a million or more in New York. That's your competition. And the fact that you're fighting a an attitude by a lot of U.S. directors and producers that, Van that Vancouver actors, when they come up here, are not good enough. That's their, I've heard them talk about it on the set, because they thought, I'm an American, so, you know, I, I was part of the conversation. Well, I'm dual. I'm a Canadian. And I work up here, but I came up here with a resume. And by the way, that's a lie from the pit of hell. It's not true. There are terrific actors up here, but it's, it's, it's been changing over the last 15 years. When I came up here, there were no production facilities. There were no ADR facilities. They, they were hiring people to you know, move lights around that didn't know what the hell they were doing. There were no studios outside of the, the one over in North Van, Lionsgate. That was it. Now, look around you. The whole industry boomed up and voids were filled, and now you got people teaching makeup. <laughs> and hair, right? <laughs> I mean, come on, man. I mean, there's find a find a void and fill it. That's great, but the acting, they're training people to be extras. Mm -hmm. I don't want anybody in here that wants to be an extra. Anybody in here want to be guy number two in X Files? Raise your hand. Get out. I ain't kidding. I ain't kidding. I I I. Alberta has to talk me down off a ledge about twice a week. I'm crazy, I admit it, but I, it, dri it drives me wild. And there's things I, you know, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Duh. And sometimes I don't. And in this case, I'm for you. I, I think about you guys all the time, and I, this one needs that, and this one needs that, etc. And you show up every week and you do the work, and that's great. So I know for, for uh, part of it I'm preaching to the choir, but um, you're, you're doing the right thing. There is no easy, easy pass to success in anything. If any of you played a musical instrument, I know some of you are into the arts. If you've ever done dance, if you've ever done anything that's, that's cool, are worthwhile. You know it takes discipline and time and effort. You have to be the water wearing away the stone and you have to love it and not give up and not quit and want it better more than anything. And that's who you are. And I'm here to serve that. So um, just keep your eyes open. If, if something sounds uh, too good to be true, it probably is. Um, there's a lot of opportunity up here and you're going to get your shot at it as long as you do your work. I was telling one of my actors this week, you learn how to act, they're looking for you. Back to that conversation with my agent, he says, this, he says it's crazy. He says, I, I, I want to scream at some of the actors on my roster that think they're better than they are, mm -hmm. to get back in class. To, 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 you know, I, I don't want to tell them that the casting directors are saying, ah, they're just, they're just and yet they think they are. I, I mean, it's amazing. Keep working, keep striving. One other thing, and then we'll get to work. Personal monologues, as you know, this is our last class of this session. Our next session starts on the 16th of October when I'm back from Morocco. Personal monologues will be due then. We will not have personal monologues if there are auditors. I, I think you're right about that. Um, the reason we're having personal monologues is by far the number one stumbling block for most actors is being able to tap into their emotional truth to bring every facet of rage and passion and laughter and every other emotion that is in the human gamut. And I want to break you open like, you know, like a Pop-Tart. I, I just... And the way to do it is to attach you to something personal. I want you to be attached to your emotional energy and I want to break through. 
We eliminated one person at the monologue slam because their monologue was a personal uh, and, and self-written. And it was very well done. It was very good. But I said to Andre, it's cheating. If, if you're in a monologue contest, what, what I want to see you do is become somebody else. Take somebody else's writing, process it through your instrument, but be truthful with somebody else's material. If you're writing the material, it's, it's too easy. It's attached. So that's what we're doing. You're writing your own monologue, and I want you to be attached to it. I want you to feel some things. And the personal monologue can be anything, but it's got to be something that means something to you and something you've never told anybody. You're in a safe place here. What you see here, what you hear here, when you leave here, you leave it here. Nobody talks about it. And, and I, I, we will make this a safe place. And uh, all of you need it. Um, your emotional instrument is your ticket to ride. If you're not in control of it, it's in control of you. And if you can't bring it, believe me, they're going to find somebody else who will. All of the scenes that I listed to you, and, I'll, and I'm going to bring them I'm back, I'm collecting more scenes, and I'm going to recommend you to watch these scenes in these TV uh, uh, movies or shows and films to see just what kind of emotional and physical commitment it takes to become a working actor at the top. So uh, the 16th will be the first day that the monologues will do. Also, please don't fuck off while I'm gone. Work hard. Work on these scenes. Take it seriously. And when I come back, um, I expect to, to see all of you at Brown. And thank you for listening. Thank you. All right, let's get to work. Somebody get up there and act. Oh, wait, no, no. Never mind. Nicholas. Yes, since you're new, here's what you're going to do. Everybody say hi to Nicholas. Hi, 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 Nicholas.